Welcome to The Pictures Get Smaller. My name is Adam O'Connor, and I'm the producer of this show. The things you'll hear over the next 50 minutes or so represent the views of The Pictures Get Smaller and the people making them. All opinions and quotations in no way represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. So, good evening and welcome to The Pictures Get Smaller. I'm Adam O'Connorkey and I'm joined by returning contributor Cal Heck and Susan Kearns, a veteran of UWM's graduate English program, the education director of Milwaukee Film, the co-founder of Gal Friday Films, and a filmmaker in her own right. In fact, Susan's short film, Missed Connections, screened at the Milwaukee Show during last year's film festival. And speaking of the Milwaukee Film Festival, this year's, begin, this year's edition begins, uh, let's see, uh, tomorrow. We here at the Pictures Get Smaller couldn't be more excited about the return of the Milwaukee Film Festival. And so today's conversation focuses on the festival, from the special events to the festival's relationship with the Milwaukee community to, of course, the films themselves. So I thought we'd begin today uh, maybe thinking about how there's something something really special, I guess, about that relationship between this particular film festival and the community in which it takes place. Um, we have international films. We have a whole host of local ones as well, uh, films of local interest, as well as just involvement within the community on top of, um, on top of the programming itself. <laughs> so maybe we can begin there. Um, yeah, is there any place? Well, first, let me say hello again. Hi, Cal, Susan, thanks for joining tonight. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, Susan, a lot of your work is actively involved with, well, branching out to high school students, right? Yeah. So we, um, I work with a collaborative cinema program at Milwaukee Film, and that specifically um, reaches out to both high school, uh, high school students, and then also college film students. Um, so one of the one of the goals of the Milwaukee Film Festival is really to, like you said, to work with Milwaukee filmmakers, and we're trying to um, trying to make it sort of a, a symbiotic relationship in terms of you know we feel like the more we can support filmmakers in this town, um, the more they support the film festival and it right. just it just sort of helps everyone you know including the community at large um, with collaborative cinema we it's a screenwriting program and so we actually have a high school student uh, whose whose script we turn into a short film in the summer we also opened up applications this year for um, for college students to apply to direct the film oh wow um, yeah so the the film actually we made this year it's called the vampire formerly known as Dracula <laughs> it was written by a high school uh, freshman named Ian Walls and it's just it's really funny and then it was directed by uh, Nate Chardin who was going to MATC at the time mm -hmm. um, and anyway yeah it'll premiere at the Milwaukee show um, <laughs> which is part of the Milwaukee Film Festival's Cream City Cinema so it's really an outstanding program and it's a way for uh, people Sorry. interested in film at different right. levels to work together on a production. Yeah, that's really exciting. And, and the Cream City Cinema, as you point out, it's uh, a program, set of films that are screening this this particular festival that have uh, local interests. Um, maybe before getting into some of those specifics, I guess I'm still curious about, I mean, it just seems like the collaborative cinema is a really time-intensive process, right? There's loads of planning, loads of work, just to get to the point where you can have this film screen at the festival. So maybe we could backtrack for a minute. And what... How far in advance do you begin working with these high school students? How do you get the screenplay written? How do you get people even sort of involved in the process? Um, it, I mean, honestly, I've already started for next year's shoot, if you can believe it. <laughs> um, so what we're doing right now is really reaching out to high school students and to teachers to try to get them to um, encourage their students to submit ideas. Mm -hmm. So basically, anybody can submit an idea if they're in ninth through 12th grade. And then um, we have a panel, or not a panel, a group of collaborative cinema mentors who are professional screenwriters and or educators and or filmmakers um, who look at these ideas and we choose the top 50 to attend a couple of workshops and those take place early in the spring semester um, from there then we work with the students one-on-one -on -one to revise their mm -hmm. scripts into 10 page scripts um, while we're doing that we're also reaching out to college students to get people to start you know being interested in applying to direct um, because they have a whole sort of separate process they need to after we have the like the top five scripts we hand those all over to the director applicants and then they 
actually have to pitch a film to us. Oh. Um, <laughs> so that way it's not like we're arbitrarily sticking a person with a script that doesn't necessarily speak to them. We want them to be able to choose the project and be able to mm -hmm. take it in their direction. Um, so yeah, so all of that has sort of already started and it's, you know, we shot the film in late July, if you can believe it, and it's already, you know, essentially done. I think it's, we're actually gonna get the, uh, the final copy tomorrow morning. Um, so it's, it's a pretty, I mean, it's a, you know, quick turnaround <laughs> time. And um, somebody told me recently, there's sort of a triangle for indie filmmaking. It's like, if it's, you know, if you need it cheap, um, then and you need it well, then it can't be fast. <laughs> and um, and they said that we're clever cinema is like the one exception to that because we sure. need it. You know, we work on a budget and we want it to be really a great mm -hmm. film, and we need it done like <laughs> right away. So, anyway, it speaks it speaks really well of the community that they all support us in this endeavor and put up with it. You know, I so. imagine there can it can be contentious at times, perhaps, with people competing to have their scripts selected or yeah you know um it's not it's really not so bad i mean i think the fact that it's an educational program and the fact that even um even the process of writing the script i think people mm -hmm. get a lot out of that so so there really isn't a lot of um you know it, at least not that i've seen like the any sure. you know hard feelings and in fact um one of the people who well the high school students they if their scripts get into the top five and their script isn't chosen um they will intern on the set oh that's great yeah so they still get like a, a really you know pretty great experience and then in fact we had some college students also that um we have an, an adult screenwriting program as well and they were really interested so we got you know a couple of them on the set too so so we really are trying to you know work with people's interests and and you know even if it doesn't necessarily lead the direction mm -hmm. they had hoped you know to give them there's still give ongoing them. sustained involvement <laughs> yeah exactly and in a meaningful experience too so mm -hmm. yeah I still think I'd like to see a reality show about this whole process. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Maybe a short season, five episodes or something. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, Cal, yeah. You think well, I'm curious about the, uh, the college students' involvement. And, I mean, is that uh, – what pool are you drawing from for the, for the college students? Is it open to college students in general in the Milwaukee area, or is it UWM in particular? Um, it's college students in the area. So, so this year again, the director came out of MATC's program, and they they have a really terrific. Um, you know, it's more aimed at television, but it's a really great program. And then we had a lot of students from UWM. We have a lot, you know, quite a bit of involvement with UWM. Um, we also had some people on set from like the Art Institute, and um, <clears throat> one woman was on set. She just graduated from uh, from Madison, and she moved back to Milwaukee. And so it was a way for her to meet some people in film in this area. So. You know, we're really trying to um, to bridge some of those communities. Uh, we found that, you know, people, and, and we all do this, yeah. <clears throat> we find the people that we work well with and that we like, and we tend to stick with them. And so one of the, the aims of collaborative cinema is to pull people from those different pockets mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of encourage everybody to work together. And then hopefully some of those, those pockets will, you know, start overlapping more or, you know, potentially create some opportunities for some new people too. Yeah, I certainly, just from attending the Milwaukee show the last several years, I've seen, you know, in the credits, recurring names <laughs> and, yeah. and even recurring performers across many of the short films. Yeah. And do you find that people are um, kind of staying in Milwaukee in order to, I mean, produce the, to pursue kind of like their filmmaking aspirations as a result of this at all? or? Yeah, um, it's it's actually kind of outstanding. Uh, we we finally tallied the numbers, and it was something ridiculous. Like I think of the high school students out of twenty, like twelve or fifteen of them had had stayed in Milwaukee specifically to go to film school, and um, and we really are finding mm -hmm. that people in this program are staying and they're getting connected to you know to different places in town and you know and getting sustainable work. So it's it's great. That's yeah. really exciting. I yeah. Mean, I'm, I'm always so amazed for being, you know, a mid-sized city. Milwaukee has this really vibrant filmmaking community. Um, and even sort of, which we can get to in a minute, just sort of cinephilic, cinephilic uh, community as well. Yeah, Based definitely. on the variety of theaters we get um, from the Landmark to the Union Theater to the Times, which I guess is reopening at some point. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, um, um, the Rosebud's already reopened, and the Times is, yeah. I think, just a couple weeks away. Yeah, that's really great. Um, before we get into the fandom side, though, I'm still let's let's linger on this topic about local filmmakers uh, and with the Milwaukee show. So we have high school students, we have college students, and then we also just have working filmmakers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and 
So you've gone through this experience before. Um, you've had your film screen there. Uh, what is, what's the sort of process like, that, um, again, to develop the, the film, to, to get to the point where it can be screened at a festival, um, either in competition or as yours was, was just part of the program, I believe. Um, yeah, mine, mine was not in competition because I work for the festival, yes. <laughs> and that, that seemed a little bit sketchy. Of course. To... <laughs> um, but the, the process is, I mean, it's really totally different. Um, for Misconnections, the film that you referred to before, I mean, we were you know relying a lot on people who were helping us just out of the goodness of their heart. So, you know, so that process takes longer um, mm -hmm. because you, you know, you, you want to, you, you don't want to um, take advantage of people any more sure. than you absolutely have to. <laughs> um, with something like Collaborative Cinema, which is, you know, we have sponsorships through the film festival. So, um, so we, you know, we can't pay like a normal rate. Like if we were Nike, we'd be paying a lot more, obviously. Right. Um, but we are able to give, you know, to give some people incentives to, um, to, you know, for helping, like they'll get some, some film festival tickets and things mm -hmm. like that. And I think that helps, um, you know, that, I mean, I don't think people, I don't think anybody's in it for the tickets. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that. But I think the fact that it's supporting the community, yeah. that it's helping students, um, you know, and then that there is sort of this party at the end, mm -hmm. you know, I think all of those things um, sort of contribute to the fact that we are able to get it done quickly. So, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a true communal creative process, the cinema, right? And that there's something appealing about that, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, yes, we can. We always have the auteur theory, right? <laughs> like the director <laughs> being the preeminent one. But uh, I've, I forgot who it is, some critic, I think it might have been Love Manovic or something, who uh, linked filmmaking to like architecture and that there's a whole host of collaborators who have to construct this gigantic thing. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's <laughs> definitely it's true. Film. <laughs> yeah, oh, it, I mean, absolutely. And you never know, like, you know, the, the touch that people talk about again and again, like you, you never know where that comes from. You know, sometimes yeah. it's a script, sometimes it's the director, sometimes it's a, you know, it's a PA that just had a good idea and like got mm -hmm. it in there. So, yeah. Have you had those fortuitous moments in your own film? Do you mind sharing? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are tons of them. Um, I'm a little bit too brain dead to think of an example <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. It's fine. <laughs> um, oh, let's talk about something else. And if sure. I think of one, I'll come <laughs> back to it. <laughs> <laughs> so with the Milwaukee show, then we have um, local working filmmakers and, and it's all generally is it, it's shot in town, like or in parts thereabouts or um, and then, like, the winner also receives a filmmaker in residency from Collaborative Cinema? Yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the the Milwaukee show, actually, you know, those films can be made, at, or they can be shot anywhere. You know, the um, for the most part, the, the filmmakers live here. Okay. Um, so that's, but we don't, you know, somebody lives here but is shooting a film in, you know, Cambodia or something, we're not going to not allow that to screen um so with the the award that that one person is given it's a filmmaker in residency package like you said and it's actually not affiliated with collaborative cinema it's a mm. totally separate thing um so they get like you know some some money to help finance their next project they get a really sweet prize package from um, north american camera uh for gear uh, like for the you know they usually end up checking out the um a red camera and now they've got the epic so okay. it's like you know this is like the like Hollywood level sure. camera, um, and then independent independent studios also <clears throat> um, gives them a really nice post production package, so they can you know get help with editing and and post production sound and all of that. So the idea is that it's sort of a launching point for this person's next film. Um, and again, it's you know we've we've seen some really neat mm -hmm. stuff come out of it. Um, in fact, Tate Bunker's film studies in space was directly funded by the uh the the filmmaker in residence program because he won the milwaukee show two years ago for yeah. his film uh M mickey burgermeister starring mickey burgermeister and so is studies in space uh is it in post-production or is it part of the milwaukee show this year yeah it's part of the milwaukee show this That's year exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm, it is and he also has a feature as well. he does yeah so he's i think he's probably not getting a lot of sleep these days <laughs> <laughs> yeah i imagine not <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah. his feature is called Little Red. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it's a it's a contemporary Little Red Riding Hood story. So I actually wrote it. 
Um, so yeah, so that's, I mean, that's really exciting too. And, you mm -hmm. know, Tate's a great guy and, you know, an ambitious filmmaker and one of the best cinematographers in yeah. town. So. But he still seems committed to being local. And Absolutely. Yeah. I can't, I kind of can't imagine Tate wanting to go anywhere else. So. <laughs> you know, I recall the, the filmmaker in residence who's film screen last year, and I don't recall his name, but it was The Wheel. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yep. That's John Roberts. John Roberts. Um, and I seem to see press that that film was screening at other festivals too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it, it recently played at the Sidewalk Film Festival in Alabama, which apparently mm -hmm. is a, a really good time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's been getting, he played Holly Shorts as well. He's been winning some awards at other festivals too. So it's, I mean, you know, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I think that's exciting to see that something not produced by <laughs> the Milwaukee Film Festival per se, but producing relationship with or in conjunction with somehow is now being brought in right like there's this diaspora of milwaukee filmmakers that's <laughs> kind of happening it seems over the last couple of years yeah i mean and that's sort of what we hope you know we don't we're we're clearly not trying to become like a, a production company or anything but yeah. um but you know the the more that we can help with people and a lot of times you know it is the sort of getting gaining access to equipment and getting some like even just a little bit of financial support and sort of helping people just get to that yeah that next level so yeah we're happy to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been fun to see develop Thanks. <laughs> from an outsider's <laughs> point of view. <laughs> um, maybe then we can switch topics a little bit and think about how the film festival relates to just uh, fans in general. And I'm talking the whole range from hardcore cinephiles to just casual viewers. And, and when you think about this in relationship to Milwaukee Film Festival in particular, but just film festivals in general possibly in like, how these events sort of cater to a certain type of filmmaker or film viewer, and then also try to entice others in, into becoming greater films, more enthusiastic, or greater fans, more enthusiastic fans. Um, so, so yeah, outside of the Milwaukee Film Festival, maybe we can share a couple, I don't know, proto film festival experiences. Cal, I know you were sharing some things ahead of time about uh, your time. Well, I mean, there's a, a, a variety, and a long list of kind of really interesting film festival experiences, but one of the things that I always find striking um, in my kind of, you know, I've never been involved, well, I've been only tentatively involved with the actual, like, business end of a film festival, right? It's always been as, like, a cinephile that I've been going, right? Yeah. And one of the really striking things about a film festival, and something that's very uh, rarely offered to you in any context, right, is the, is the ability to see something that's kind of totally new to you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, like, my my deepest and darkest cinephile days are all spent in New York City, right, where you're, where you're <laughs> you're tracking the movies that they're coming in and going out and planning your schedule in relation to them, right? And the cine uh, and a uh, film festival always often offers this kind of like different uh, set of variables where you can now mm -hmm. like mm, kind of read a, a short description of something and then decide on the spot if you want to see it and see something that's totally new and, and perhaps totally like unknown. Unknown, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's like it's like a, a something that's totally unique to film festivals and really yeah. kind of striking, I think. So some strategy behind the film going experience for the cinephile. Yeah. Like I remember uh, Adrian Martin is an uh, Australian film critic, came to campus and spoke with some of us grad students last spring, and he just mentioned being befuddled, you know, absolutely confounded by people who go to film festivals to see the newest, I think he said literally Woody Allen film. <laughs> <laughs> he was criticizing people seeing Midnight at Paris in Paris or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's interesting. Uh, and, I mean, I know I certainly have, um, you know, seen plenty of unknown things to me uh, just by... Even this the title is sometimes enticing enough, and I think it sounds fascinating. I'm curious, what do you two think about, say, I think it was Toronto Film Festival where Cloud Atlas was the centerpiece of the festival? And what do we make of sort of mainstream, big budget films being filmed that are being screened at film festivals? Is that appropriate? Is that is that somehow tainting the film festival with commercialism? <laughs> Susan's giving me a little I, weird no, I, I'm going to let Cal go first. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say it's un inappropriate, right? But like, <laughs> I, I have so little interest in seeing a movie like that at a film festival, right? If I'm, yeah. I'm going to see a major mainstream kind of movie, I'm going I'm to wait for it to come. And, sure. and maybe I'm interested in it and I'll see it. But right, like the, the appeal of a film festival for me is exactly the opposite of that. Right, so I, I don't. Uh, it's a it's a marketing technique, I guess they're using to, to sell uh -huh. a festival and create press, right? But sure. In terms of the movie itself, I mean, I don't know. It strikes me as strange. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of all for it. Um, I mean, I do understand the, the idea that, you know, maybe that's like, maybe that's not the, mm -hmm. the film that needs the festival and needs yeah. like, you know, that kind of push and everything. I totally get that. Um, as a festival goer, I find extreme pleasure in both things. Like there's nothing that I love more than going to a film I don't really know anything about and just being blown away by it. You know, I mean, I think that's just like, obviously like that's one of the reasons I go to festivals, yeah. you know, even outside of my job, I, I go to festivals to, to hope for that experience. At the same time, it's like, there is something about being at the premiere mm -hmm. and it's like the excitement and the energy and like everybody's there and it hardly, I mean, it Maybe this is part of the problem. In some ways, it hardly matters what the movie is actually like, sure. you know, because it's it's such an event. Um, but what, what's interesting, I mean, what I was thinking about with Cloud Atlas is kind of different because I think everybody's watching that, like all over the world, yeah. people are yeah. watching that film. Um, when I was in Berlin, I went to the, the world premiere of this film, Barbara, which is uh, a film that it's actually screening in, sh oh no, it's screening in New York uh, for the New York Film Festival. Um, and it's a you know German director, and uh, he did the films uh, Yella and Jericho. Okay. Um, anyway, German director, German star. You know, I'd seen his first two films, but I wasn't really expecting the magnitude of this premiere. And it's a fantastic movie, but I was literally in the front row, and <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like feet away from these major German stars, and I don't have any idea who they are. You know, and there is also something like really, really fun about that. Yeah. And in and of course that's like the best way to see that movie you know if you can yeah so. but. i've certainly have felt that too i mean it's it's cliche perhaps to say but there's something palpable about the excitement <laughs> yeah. when you when you're at events and, and i think that is something that the film festivals are really good for on on any sort of scales is turning turning the film going experience into an event right yeah. that there's um you know each festival has its own particular uh films and screenings that become happenings but then there's just like things that develop over the course of the festival as well. And, and Cal, you were mentioning that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, just like line conversations. Like, if you uh, um, are going to, you know, three or four movies a day, right, then there's, there's certain things you're overhearing, you're discussing with other people that you've seen around the festival, right? And, and word of mouth starts to develop just in the context of this festival, right? And it becomes yeah. this, this, like, this. Mm -hmm press system of its own, right? Just these lines where you're discussing kind of, oh, this surprised me and it's really good, or don't go see that, it sucks after all, or whatever, right? And it's like, and that's always just been a fascinating process to me. And also, often I've found it like, that's how I'm led to kind of the most interesting movies yeah. uh, of a festival. Mm -hmm. Like I saw um, at the Seattle International Film Festival one year, I saw uh, kind of before he was a big star, Gia Jean Coe's The World. Oh, right, okay. as a result of someone like recommending it to me that I didn't know in line, and it was like, you know, it's an absolutely fabulous movie, and uh, it was a totally unique experience to like this little community that's built, yeah, just yeah. film festival goers. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think too. Um, I mean, the the Q and A's with you know directors or oh, yeah. whoever's there, um, I feel like that's a part of the experience too. And one thing that I I don't understand is I've heard people say like, oh, I didn't like that movie, so I didn't stay for the Q and A. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like it. Sometimes it actually helps, you know, even if I didn't like the film, it helps sort of contextualize what's, you know, what's what's happening in the film or what the intent was sure. and things like that. And I feel like that's kind of interesting. And um, so a, an example I'm thinking of is um, at South by Southwest, not this year, but the year before, I saw this film called Viva Riva. And um, it was an African film and the audience was just sort of stunned by it, you know, because it was, it was really incredibly violent. And um, listening to the director, then afterwards, people were sort of like, well, are you okay with the fact that, you know, this is how you're encouraging the world to see your country? And he said, well, I was trying to make an American action film. This is what you guys do. <laughs> you know, so it wasn't, That's it wasn't about him trying to represent his country. It was yeah. about his, tr him trying to emulate like what he thinks we're doing, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, wow, that, I mean, it just totally changed the film for me. Yeah. That's so. a really interesting act of translation of yeah. conventions. <laughs> right. Right. It's also representative of, of the way that, that kind of meaning is made out of movies at a film festival process, right? Because it's a very particular audience that goes to a film festival. Mm -hmm. It's neither, you know, like me and my buddies in trench coats in the back row as like super cinephiles <laughs> with no girlfriends or whatever. Um, Crawling out of the basement for two yeah, hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nor is it like, um, nor is it kind of popular cinema goers you might find, well, some people who you might find at a multiplex, but not exclusively, yeah. right? And so it's like, it's a really unique combination of people that m compose the audience of the film yeah. festival yeah. screening too, which I think is fascinating. And it really helps with kind of those Q and A's too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's, again, adding into that a whole group who just 
it's an event again like there's something about it they'll attend because it's happening in town like right <laughs> people are there i mean there's there's events on top of the actual screening such as the opening night party and other and the q's and a's um 